1577 Music Podcast. What's up? This is Al G. Here with Turbo. YKC. And you're listening to 857 Music Podcast, where we discuss music, news, trends, questions, and all that good stuff. And today, we actually just came across an article, a pretty disturbing article. It's really sad. Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams lose multi-million dollar Blurred Lines lawsuit. Which kind of sucks. Which really sucks. It changed the music industry. It definitely did. It. it definitely did. All right. Yeah, we wanted to discuss the Robin Thicke and the Pharrell case um, since we thought it was very, very important uh, going up against uh, Marvin Gaye's family. I think it was specifically his, uh, I think it was his daughter and his son. But apparently that they lost, um, they got to pay out $7.4 million because, you know, according to the jury that they had, they copy, you know, they infringed on copyrights from uh, a couple of Marvin Gaye's songs. Oh, Marvin Gaye's Got to Give It Up versus Blurred Lines from Robin Thicke and Pharrell. We'll discuss that one first. <laughs> How come they don't talk about T.I.? He's not mentioned in this. No, no, T.I., <laughs> no, this is a, there's a reason why. Uh, T.I. was like a co-writer of the song, but since he only wrote his verse. <laughs> like he, he was, was a like, guest. The guests don't get sued. Yeah, they, they had nothing to do with it. They say, yo, T.I., get on this. Exactly. So, like, the, <laughs> the credits really went to, uh, you know, Robin Thicke and Pharrell. Who wrote it? Well, that's part of the problem also, because... Did Pharrell write it? Oh. Robin Thicke went back and forth a couple of times. Robin over. Thicke doesn't write, does he? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. That's a good question. That is a good question. I don't even know. I have no idea. You, can never, you don't really know with R&B singers. It's like a lot I of don't them know. write this lyrics, a lot of them don't. I know Robin Thicke's been out for a while, but yeah. I haven't heard of him until this song. Really? <laughs> Apparently. Because a couple yeah. of years he was out. Yeah. From the research that I've done, I know Robin Thicke went back and forth... Um, trying to get credits for the song for uh, writing Blurred Lines. But then, as the proceedings went on, he kind of said that Pharrell wrote most of, you know, well, every single part of the song. Robin Thicke doesn't do music like that, though. I thought he was like a crooner. He did. It's mostly like There's that. There's not no pop anthem stuff. All I know is that he really wanted to get credit for it. So you know. Well, he got credit. <laughs> it's like... So basically, with you guys, how did you guys feel about the case? Do you think it was uh, ruled fairly? Um, Hell no, man. Hell fucking no, man. That's not fair at all. So what was what was the case in particular? Like, what was what are, what were they talking about? What are they talking about? They say, uh, all right, they're trying to say that uh, blurred lines, um, Pharrell and Robin Thicke took parts of uh, Marvin Gaye's "Got to Give It Up." So you're saying they infringed on that song completely? Yeah, and the thing about the thing that's funny is that Marvin Gaye's uh, children they have copyrights to the sheet music, not even to the sound recorded. So yep. that kind of yeah, that kind of caused problems in the beginning of the case. Um, they thought that they weren't going to get a fair trial or whatever like that. Well, would, should they? No, <laughs> I was like they shouldn't. They shouldn't have uh. got a trial in the first place anyway. Because how are you supposed to have sheet music? How are you going to compare what you have on sheet music to? The composition that was put together by Pharrell. As if they actually played the sheet music. Yeah. If you looked at the sheet music for Blurred Lines, will it be the same Ex as Got right. to Give It Up? There's that issue. And it's just like, well, you guys both heard both songs for a while. Like, we, we, we all heard both songs together. We'll have links for uh, for the songs for anybody well, out there who hasn't heard it. Mama Gay was like 1977, so <laughs> I didn't listen to it that much. <laughs> but it's a classic, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's but we listened to them side by side. We did. There was nothing. I. <sighs> the only thing I could say is that the mood and the vibe you could, it would you could see that it was inspired by it. Can you get sued by a vibe? You can see blurred lines was. A apparently, you can. <laughs> yeah, that's messed up. That's <laughs> apparently, what's, that's what's you wrong can. With the case, apparently, you if you're influenced by someone, you can get sued. Which is kind of messed. They up. can get your money. Now, here's a question. Does the gay family actually need money? Do they really need the money like that? Well, you got to say it like that. <laughs> that's it, that is, that's, that's the name. The <laughs> Which gay family are you talking about? <laughs> the gay family, you know. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. Or the No. I'm not <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what their current occupations are. I don't know what they do for a living, but I, I think apparently that they're greedy. The thing is, is that Robin <laughs> Thick is yeah. th they're definitely greedy. Robin Thick has been on record saying that he's heavily inspired by Marvin Gaye and I think that right. they just saw blood and they kind of right. just like, All right, here all we right. go. It's like all you can do is and it's 
kind of just like what Pharrell's lawyer said. They were just like, these. this family is trying to sue, they're trying to claim ownership of a genre, which is kind of messed up. Because right. any artist that comes out today and tries to... Uh, a genre of happiness. A g- a yeah. G- That's what <laughs> it yeah, is. You could, you could just say that about anything, though. I mean, if... If this uh, if this song or any of these singles actually uh, weren't popular at all, do you think they would come after him and sue him for for infringement? Absolutely not. Of course. Yeah. So, Blair, so what it comes down to is just about money. If Blur Lines didn't make like upwards of <laughs> seventeen million over that summer, Blur yeah. Lines is supposed to be uh, Robin Thicke's top hit ever. I think right. it's supposed to be his most successful. Yeah. Hit. It was the song of that year. Yeah. I think it was at least. Right. No, at least in New York, it was. It got played a lot. And it I did. don't know what's going on with California state law. It's it's setting a horrible precedent. I, they need to pick smarter people on the jury. I don't know the occupations of the people on the jury, but they need to pick people who actually know about music, who have a listening ear. <laughs> well, able to do it. they said they got just average Joes to listen to it first and to see Great. if it was reminiscent of each other. But you know what? Right. They were, they were then, allowed to listen to a stripped down version. Yeah, because you know what they did? They played the drums. <laughs> And right. they said, well, that sounds like the same drums. Right, right. And if you can sue over drums, then right. we have no music. Yeah. Then we have no music. No music should be the same. And that just makes you question the, the judicial That's system true. altogether. Because how the, like, there, it really is flawed, man, if you think about it. There would be no hip hop music. There would be no there'd be no music R and B music. There would be no like you can't just Everybody take drums and sue on them. You can't yeah, drum like art art in general is inspired by other art. Like Every art, like even if it's not music, even if it's a, let's say it's a director. I, I like Steven Spielberg and I'm a director and I, and I take a scene that's like his. Yeah. I can get sued by him. You cannot of, have Because I'm glass. influenced by. <laughs> you know, and I was saying the same thing too. I'm like, you I'm know? scared for other types of art. What about video right. games? You know, right. it's just like, and it's like, and, go, and going back to music, it's like, all right, it's, it's like taking a gu- guitar sound, a guitar riff or whatever, and right. it's like, okay, the guy who invented the guitar right. is going to sue you because you use the guitar, a sound of a... It's, stupid. it's crazy, man. It's like, this is how retarded it is. It's like, you can't, you can't sue based on that. It's the a sad... Is, it's really sad, man. Is it inspiration or infringement is what the case is, and it's... It's crazy because, I mean, you can be a fan well, of somebody and want to be like them. Of course. You come out, you're obviously not going to come out with the same song as them, but you're going to want to sound some, similar. And you can yeah. tell when you listen to a song if a song is influenced by someone oh, yeah. else. Oh, yeah, definitely. You can tell. But can you get sued by apparently now yeah, you apparently, can. Uh, influences and friends? At, at least in California <laughs> State, you know? <laughs> I guess if someone from California wants to sue you for something. It's really sad. All right, let, me, let me ask you this, though. Where do mixtapes come into play then? How would they even, how do you, because there's a whole culture of mixtapes in hip-hop. Yeah, there is. And they use beats sure, they and use songs strings. and choruses of other songs. Right. But, and but it, obviously they're inspired by that when they're doing the song because it relates to that exact same song. But right. here, here's, now, one of, here's my theory on why they can get away with it. It's underground. But they play it on the radio. <laughs> they do. That, yeah. They do. Like it's on and it gets run like a regular song. I mean, maybe it's just a New York they thing, do. but they play it. At night, do they, they sell play. it though? Do they they don't it? sell it. That's what I'm saying. That's, but they, it's it's for promotion. Yeah, but still they're getting paid though. You don't get paid for having your your stuff play on the radio. Yeah, but that's rotation. Oh, but like that's like if you. I don't do. know that's how like if you work off of mixtape songs. That's a good question. Well, <laughs> I was like, I don't. Know. Well, listen, they, they they hire you to do a show, right? Mm-hmm. You're doing a performance. You're performing your, your usual music, and then you do some new song. At a show, you can do At a do show. It. Yeah. yeah. How is that any different? Because they bought the ticket already. <laughs> but how is that any di- I, I'm paying, you know, you're listening to advertisements on a radio. If I recorded that so show on a DVD and showed it on HBO, then that's another story. That's why it's it can't be put, I would think, not on the radio. Right. Well, the radio is all, cre- I mean, you know why they created the radio, right? Terrestrial radio was created to sell advertisements. Sell advertisements, yeah. So anything that's on the radio is, is making money. <laughs> No, but that's a good question. But the second the second song that Robin Thicke has to pay damages for was um, Love After War. Because the... Has anyone heard that? I've heard Love After War. <laughs> and I, I saw the video, too. He's got Paula Patton in the video. It's actually... I like the song. I like, And you've, you've actually heard some of it, too. But they yeah, said... Yeah, I heard it. They're trying... The gay family is trying to say that they ripped off of uh, Marvin Gaye's classic, After the Dance. And... 
What did you think, Al? I thought that... You know what? I... I hear two different songs. The only thing, the point where you made saying that the chord the, during the chorus, the melody part where it goes. The chord progression. Well, I, I didn't say that yet. But <laughs> off, uh, off, no, but, uh, off, <laughs> off the air. Off the air. I, off the air, you did, I did mention that I do hear a little similarities. However, I do hear the, the influences that, that uh, Robin Thicke had. But I don't think that. It's infringement. I, I, you could sorry, tell he's but definitely influenced. He's by influenced by him, but so it's it's not a coincidence that no. they sound very very similar. Right, but do you think it's worthy of being sued? Like I didn't no. hear a sample. I didn't hear a. Blitz. There are no samples in that, but I that song. No, mm-hmm. I can genuinely hear mm-hmm. the background singers okay. singing the same chords that the background singers were singing on Marvin Gaye's song. Right. So that's a little more, eh. Maybe, <laughs> but I don't think that it's enough as far as how music has, has been yeah, but, uh-huh. beforehand, before this lawsuit. I don't see you getting sued for that. But now, no, I, uh, I can't even say. Right. But you don't think it's it shouldn't be it shouldn't be like worthy of being. He shouldn't. It shouldn't be enough to be. Worthy if they questioned it. Well, if they brought it to court and questioned it. Yeah, I do see why for that song. Mm-hmm. But shit, man. But I don't know could, if it should win. They could do it with other songs too, though, like the hip hop. I mean, well, look at. <laughs> I got. There's well, a lot of songs that use the same. <laughs> there's there are a lot of songs they, that use the same line. Oh yeah. <laughs> or they'll reference another song through there, like. Like when Jay Z says a biggie line, like when right. anyone says a biggie line. Right. So <laughs> now they owe them royalties or some shit. Like, how does that? That's how does that fucking work? Yo, can you take one line? It's like you're kind of giving tribute, but can you sue for taking one line of something? Yeah. Lyrics but didn't you like? say that that Bruno Mars and what's his name? I forgot the other guy's name. But Bruno Mars and uh, that hit that song. He says, "Don't believe me, just watch." And then you got yeah. Uh, and then so you got what's his name? James up. Brown. <laughs> no, not James <laughs> Brown. That sounds like James Brown. It sounds no, like but no, I'm talking it's about heavily other influenced like by James Brown. They're trying to have six different writers on that song because they're purposely trying to avoid a Pharrell and Robin Thicke style lawsuit. And that's but, sad. But it's po- <laughs> because it's popular. Right. But I didn't hear the original song. That no, I'm talking about what you call it. What? Don't believe we just watch. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't hear Don't the... Don't believe we just watch. How's that anywhere near <laughs> what I don't even know what the dude's name is? What is his name? Don't don't ask me, man. The guy, the, rap, the rapper <laughs> no. dude. Oh, if you want to call him that. Um, <laughs> the guy with yeah, the gold the teeth. Dude. I forget his name now. I forgot. That's all right. We, we can look it up. We got the internet right here. Yeah, put in a... Uh, Let's see what we can uh, Put in gold on my watch. Gold on my... Yeah, it's garbage. Gold on my... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gold, gold on my watch. You wonder why we forgot gold him. Gold <laughs> That is hilarious. But no, I, I I see what you're saying. But, but you um, can't you gold can't my watch lyrics. <laughs> but you can't take a, a phrase. I thought that you can't take. You know how many songs are named the same thing? You can't. It's, Trinidad James. You can't, I know oh, you yes, can't yes. Take. Trinidad James. Yes. <laughs> James. Now you said that he got money from that, right? Uh, or something? I, I, I believe so. that he yeah. is trying to sue that. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's, that's kind of crazy. That's where we're headed. Do you that's think it's worthy? Of be, I I didn't hear his original song, so I can't even. You heard it. How Everybody's heard it, man. It's garbage. <laughs> it's garbage. Not does, a he have, does he have a case? He doesn't have a case because oh, it's not right. said the same way. If I can, if you can take a phrase and say it differently, yeah. and say that I own the phrase, that's yeah. kind of BS. That yeah, is kind of BS. That. You, you that's not that. right. Because you could take this. There's, there's artists that have had the same names of song titles, but yeah. the song's different. But the titles. There's people the who said the same words because it's called the English language. <laughs> <laughs> Last I heard, that wasn't copyrighted. That's true. But I hear you. I think it's... Uh, yeah. And then his other songs, I got Katy Perry. Which, which song was that? Which uh, song by Katy Perry? TGIF. Okay. And it's Friday night. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. We're not going to pay for that. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please but, don't uh, sue us. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got Maroon 5, uh-huh. Sugar. Now, right. when I heard this song on the radio, mm-hmm. it angered me. Right. Because it sounded exactly... Like Katy Perry's what? Friday song. Exactly. It was the same guitar. Right. Right. No one questioned that. No one sued it. No one's talking about it. Right. And it made it was so close it made me angry. Yo, what about uh what about Flo Rider? <laughs> what all the songs sounding the every, same? Every, <laughs> no, he takes, every uh, song he takes. Well he takes an EDM track and he raps well, take over an it. old song and uh, But like I'm sure they have so accommodations to right? them. You no. Yeah, it's like he modifies. Yeah, Flo Rider. So Flo Rider. 
<laughs> yeah. So I mean, he takes an EDM track, right. and right. like he'll rap over it, and I'm sure that he has an agreement with the EDM tracks producer or DJ or whoever you want to call. Probably, yeah. So I'm sure they make a lot of money off it because it's just a cross promotion. Mm. I'm sure that Pitbull and and him aren't stealing those songs. <laughs> yeah, because they're getting paid. Yeah, they're getting paid. So, so they so maybe you, they're not so getting paid. And, so they and cleared the EDM guys are getting paid. <laughs> they cleared the, they cleared the music is what you're saying. So they they're not, they won't get they, sued for that. Yes, they had to do it the right way. Yeah, right. Yeah, but in so. the case of Robin Thicke, I just don't see how he stole. I I don't call him. I can't call him a Pharrell a thief. I, I don't right. see it. I heard both songs. Put it by this side. way: There's no reason it should have been that popular. <laughs> He's not <laughs> that famous. <laughs> There's something going on. <laughs> and he stole it. He stole that fame from somewhere because he's not that famous. That's true. It's garbage. His dad was famous. <laughs> <laughs> from growing things. <laughs> That's true. So, I love that show. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. His father yeah. was like, <laughs> So yes. I don't know. I don't know where he got that. I don't know either. <laughs> That's but crazy. Another, another comparison I had was, mm-hmm. all right, Every track that's out right now is a DJ Mustard track, right? So you all know what that sounds like. It's the right. same beat. It's pretty much the same beat. <laughs> yeah. And they all go, hey, hey, in the background. Right. Like, it's yeah. all the same. Same okay? exact beat. Now, that Iggy Azalea beat for Fancy was not a DJ Mustard track. Now, <laughs> that's the most popular DJ Mustard track mm-hmm. that's been released, but it wasn't by him. And no one's saying, oh, the feeling of DJ Mustard was in that song, so right. let me sue the hell out of Iggy Azalea because a lot of people would love to do that. Don't give them ideas, man. <laughs> I, well, I don't know how. I don't know how that's not being questioned so because they completely ripped off his sounds. Don't give them any Seriously. ideas, man. If you're listening, please don't sue. <laughs> sue her. Don't do it. Yeah, that's sue what I'm her. It's like this. This case. It's not like when Vanilla Ice came out with Ice Ice Baby and that instrumental. It was. That was a clear. Rip. That was a blatant sample rip. That no, a, that was a sample. It was. That was a no way. Hold on. It was like do 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 yeah, that was a yeah. sample. That, but was, that a was sample another too. time yeah. period when samples were legal, right. To use, right, right. But that was but the, the first case, right? That, that was, was the case that, that kind of made sampling a no-no. You know, like that was. There kinda, was many others though. There were many, many others. Well, if you go back to a tribe called Quest albums and mm-hmm. like Slick Rick albums, you have to look at there the, was tons there was of, of samples and yeah. everything that came out. Hip hop as and a, then you know, hip hop as a genre at the time was just it, it was a new thing. There were no people playing music. Right, you were just blending right. records back and forth, and it was just for parties and like Run DMC didn't have a band, right? Right, <laughs> they had it's a true. DJ and they had to flip it back and forth. That's DJ that's Jazzy Jeff, like a lot of these people you haven't heard of producing mm-hmm. because this whole style of producing changed from then, yeah. right? But they're still famous. So there you have it, folks. If you want to make some extra cash, sue. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Get your lawyer. Don't get just your sue for samples of yeah, familiar yeah. sounds. You sue for inspiration. If it sounds right. like somebody was inspired by somebody, and somehow yeah. you can prove it, shit, you can get some money. If e- even I'm if it's a catchphrase or something, just price. just sue them. Just be like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. If hey, one day I say that, <laughs> if one day I wake up and I get inspired, yeah. just just inspired. Yeah. I don't know by what. Yeah, yeah. Be careful. I'm just gonna sue it. You're yeah. gonna have to lawyer up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> your lawyers, because I've got it. Iggy Azalea for sounding like the brat. Yep. You know, no, you can sue Iggy Azalea for just sounding like. like <laughs> no, you can no. sue her for sounding like whoever is writing for her. <laughs> because that's exactly what she sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, that being said, we got some email here from. Uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, what are, uh, ah, here we go. Big Chocolate wants to know what we think. And his email reads, do you guys think Jay-Z would be as successful as he is now if Biggie was still alive today? I'll let y'all go first. I vote no. I don't think so either. Um, successful, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think, I don't doubt his success. Yeah. I don't think he would be as successful as he is now. Mm-mm. I vote yes because he has proven that he could stay in the game for a very, very long time. And he was already successful while Biggie was there and they were going to create a group themselves. So they would have both gotten even more popular. So you the fact think? that Biggie died 
made it so that he can't get worse ever. Right. Jay Z's still alive and he's still making money. Well, the, the hip hop now is garbage. <laughs> and the fact that he's still around and still relevant says a lot about hip hop. But do you think he's part of the garbage? Um, I mean, personally, I'm not a fan. I like the blueprint, personally. Blueprint three. I thought I wouldn't consider Jay Z garbage in this. I wouldn't. Th- no, in this, I'm not a, <laughs> personally. I'm not a, I'm not a fan personally, but um, yeah. there are some tracks that I do enjoy. Yeah. But uh, as a whole, I'm not a huge fan of his. I'm work. saying he's conformed. I can appreciate his accomplishments. I know. I understand that all his albums, you know, they sell, and he has a huge, huge fi- fan base. As a businessman, he but, would have been just as successful as he is now if Biggie was still around. But because do you he's think not success because of his rap? You don't think? I think Biggie that, probably would have surpassed Jay Z's success now. No, it's tough to say. But that's interesting. That's my puppy would have been way more famous if Biggie was still around. <laughs> not, oh, not anything to do with that? Biggie. <laughs> puffy would be on the side. He wouldn't come out. He would have nah. still been called Puff Daddy. Uh, all right, and so, he would have been more famous. Why, Casey? You don't feel that after uh, Biggie died, people were looking, you know, especially for a Brooklyn rapper. They were they're trying to say, okay, Biggie's dead. I'm not next, saying. Next Brooklyn rapper in line, Jay-Z was right there. He was rapping with him. You don't think they were looking towards him? I'm not saying they that Jay-Z. I'm not saying that Jay-Z didn't ride Biggie's coattails after Biggie's death to okay. get more popular. All right. I'm just saying right. that he wasn't a no-name at all. Well, that's true. He, he was, was there. No, he with, wasn't he a no-name. No name. No, he definitely wasn't a no-name. So to say that he wouldn't have been or would have been, you can't really tell. But he did steal his lines, a lot of them. <laughs> and <laughs> Sue. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Soup. from the grave. <laughs> from the grave. <laughs> but, yeah, I know, I know that people were looking for another Brooklyn guy, but it's not right. really about that because a lot of people came from Brooklyn. A lot of people sounded like Biggie, and a lot of people sounded like they weren't as successful, but right. Jay-Z made a lot of money. So he I did. don't. He he's a good he's a very successful businessman. Thanks for listening, and we'd love to hear from you. So please feel free to express your opinions in the comments section. Yeah, leave some comments. If you'd like to suggest a topic or have a general question that you'd like to have answered in the future, eight five seven music podcast. Yeah, we'll feature it on the show. Send an email to comments at eight five seven music dot com. Yep, and that's that. Peace. Eight five seven seven music podcast.